Continuing on the top 5 January theme, let's have a look at the 5 most disappointing games of 2014. Please know that disappointing does not mean bad or terrible, but hyperbole and the internet do go in hand quite nicely. Number 5 Lightning Returns is not a bad game, not at all. Admitting the weird plot about the flower that's going to destroy the universe or something and all the other crazy Japanese shit, but was I really disappointed by the game? Well, not really. It's probably the most coherent and fun out of the entire abomination that is the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, but I'm more disappointed in the fact that this game even exists to begin with. No one likes XIII. So then they went ahead and made XIII 2 to try to prove everyone wrong. Surprisingly enough, no one cared. So clearly, the smartest and best decision for Square was to make another sequel to the sequel that no one cared about. And surprisingly enough, again, no one cared. And while having one of the worst game titles in the history of anything ever, and actually being a decent game, I can't help but feel like the money used to develop Lightning Returns could have been applied elsewhere to create a more effective product. I guess it's the fact that they felt so obliged to painfully cram in the Final Fantasy 13 universe and characters instead of it being a cool one-off Final Fantasy special or something. Come on, Square, what the fuck are you doing? Number 4 I'm carefully on record as considering myself a massive Halo fan, so it was even more painful to my rabid inner fanboy to come to terms with the crushing disappointment that was the Master Chief collection. While I am very happy to have the full Master Chief saga on one disc and presented in lovely 1080p and 60 frames, the fact that the game was simply not ready for its release is completely unacceptable. Achievements not popping, menu glitches, a fucked unlock system, and most importantly the completely broken matchmaking ruins what should have set the bar as the best HD remake collection ever released. Was it too much of a task to pull off in the time constraints they had? Clearly. Should they have delayed the game? Certainly. Should the game be fixed by now? God yes. Should we write off Halo as a franchise that desperately flounders in a pathetic attempt to stay relevant in the modern clusterfuck of Twitch-based ADD manic first-person shooters? No, of course not. Because while the release of this game is certainly disappointing for both Microsoft and the Halo community, it's still a true bargain for Halo fans and those curious about checking it out for the first time. Just get it together 3 for 3, seriously. Number 3 I honestly never gave a shit about Watch Dogs. While everyone was riding that hype machine and building themselves up for what they thought was going to be the second coming of Jesus Christ, I was riding a completely different hype machine for a different game that is coming later in this list. So when I first got round to Watch Dogs, I actually thought it was okay for the most part. But it's one of those games you like less and less the more you play and think about it. The more time you spend with the embarrassingly bad, generic, cliche, immensely boring main character, Brown Coat McBrown Hat, the more it starts to wear on you. The fucking stupid story, the boring grey city, and typically Ubisoft bad mission design became extremely tiring as you gradually shoot your way and press the hack button to murder and cause chaos to uninvolve people through the faceless and characterless landscape that is Chicago and Watch Dogs. It double fucked me off that the main motivation of your character is that you're pissy over some crime assholes killing your niece in a car accident, when you carelessly drive around the city doing the exact same thing, by specifically and ruthlessly murdering innocent civilians in brutal road collisions purely so you can escape the police. Fucking twat. Number 2 I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy my yearly romp with the Assassin's Creed series. Sure, some are better than others, and they're usually very derivative and unchanged from the previous entries, but you do know what you're getting into. But in Assassin's Creed Unity, it was when my co-op partner was picking a lock and his arms stretched and morphed comically across the entire hall of a room to form a horrific mutant that I realised that this game is kind of a fucking joke. I would have a clip of it to show you, but my Xbox One decided to not save it like the masterful piece of hardware it is. We saw a glimpse as to what was coming with broken game releases back in 2013 with Battlefield 4, but we had no idea how bad it was going to get. Unbelievable frame rate issues, falling through the floor randomly, broken missions, stupid AI, graphic glitches, texture breakages, getting stuck in the geometry. It was a complete shambles. And not to mention the fact that the game being rushed and broken aside, it's reached a point for me now where I just can't cope with the ridiculous Assassin and Templar bullshit. The story goes absolutely nowhere. It's overshadowed by a conclusively forgettable and misused setting that is missing the charm and finesse it really should have. Hopefully the backlash will be a slap to the face to force Ubisoft to treat their games with a little more fucking respect. In the wise words of Shigeru Miyamoto, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Number 1 The inevitability of my number one choice here is not only certainty, but a predetermined, foreordained happenstance, a horoscope. 
The expectation, the fortune and design, it's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm gonna stop looking at thesaurus.com now. My number one pick is Destiny. It's fair to say that Destiny was kind of doomed from the get-go. The force and power it was being presented and advertised in was almost unmatched. For a new IP, it had a lot to prove. Hitting the landing and establishing what this new franchise represented was ludicrously important. And that's what Destiny just couldn't do. It has such an identity crisis that the game can't decide who it wants to appeal to. They said the game would have everything. The immersive story and world of something like Mass Effect, the competitive arena shooting of Halo, and the cooperative elements of an MMO. And unfortunately, it couldn't quite nail any of them. It does a wide range of things in an acceptable, workmanlike way, instead of excelling in one particular field. I can go on for minutes and minutes on everything Destiny did right and right. Wrong, and I did. For precisely 26 minutes, I meticulously went through everything Destiny related, beat by beat, from the horrible story to the weird multiplayer. Go check out my video with the inevitable link I put here in post. How can anything be bigger than Halo? We'll find out. And there goes another entry into the January Top 5 bucket. And don't worry, this channel's not suddenly become fucking Watch Mojo out of nowhere. I just thought it'd be a nice change of pace to round out 2014. I'll probably do one or two more, then things will be back to usual. But what do you think? Did you agree, disagree with the list? Did I miss anything off? Or do certain games not deserve to be on there? Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.